Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are doing our first ever gutter tier list of Despot's game. So what we're gonna do is it's just gonna be like a quick one where we go over what I think is the best classes in the game, two worst classes. Again, this is my opinion. You might have different opinions. You might hate how I place your favorite class. That's fine. Everybody's gonna have their own opinion. We're not gonna go into too much detail over certain mutations or anything like that. There's a couple I might mention, but overall, I'm just going to mention the special abilities that each class does. And I won't even go into like really massive amounts of detail there on this one. Maybe a future tier list when I have uh, the time to really, really get into the nitty gritty details. So we start with everybody in B and we're going to go with the eggheads and work our way down. So the eggheads, what they do is they for every three eggheads, they'll build a buff tower and you have a levels, so there's level one, two, three, of course, getting more powerful. I've never ever felt like an egghead build was strong enough, and I'm basing this kind of off of the King of the Hill, too. We're gonna go off of that mostly. Uh, so for me, I don't feel like eggheads are gonna be that useful. They're not the worst, they're not the best. I'd probably put them in like a low C tier. And now we'll go on to fencers. Fencers are pretty strong. They're, they're a very strong uh, class in this game. What they do is they deal critical hits and it scales also. So you have, it goes up to 2.5 times the regular damage. Also, they scale with the chance of a critical hit. So you have up to a 50% chance that they will hit a critical hit. I, I really like fencers. I think a lot of people really like fencers. They're pretty powerful in the current state of the game. I think I would put them in, I don't think they're S tier for me, probably probably high A tier though. I would say high A tier. It's debatable, they're close to an S tier, but not, not quite for me. Um, now we go on to healers. Healers, they do what you would expect them to do, they heal. And they heal up to 80 health to the closest wounded ally. Now the tricky thing with healers, and I wish, I wish it would, I wish there was a better way to manage it, I don't know. Um, it's the closest wounded ally. So sometimes, depending on your class, it can really, really backfire having healers at all. They just sit there and heal someone that you don't even care about getting healed at all, right? In the back line or something, it's not that important. You want your front line getting healed and they're healing the wrong people. For me, I, I don't find them useful at all in this game. I feel like they should be, they, they maybe could use a bit of work. For me, healers are a D tier. Once you really figure out the, the way this game runs, you can run through this without even having a single healer on your team. And that's not even in King of the Hill. That is in a regular playthrough. You can beat the whole game without even touching healers. And to me, that means they're not very strong at all at what they do. And then we move on to the most uh, amazing class, the newbies. The puny, pathetic humans, the newbies. They do nothing. They got nothing. Well, I mean, they don't do nothing. They, they will hit, but not for much. They'll do a little bit here and there. Other than if you get the mega newbie, they're not going to be... They're not doing anything, really, right? So for that, they are going to be D tier. They're the, the bottom of the bottom. Now we have fighters. The fighter class. This is a class that I like to use. Lots of people really really like the fighter class and what they do is free fighters they'll link up you'll see a link go on the little animation go up to and it will spread the damage amongst up to 12 of your allies and that is up to 80 percent of the damage taken will get spread throughout those allies that's that are all all linked up i feel like they're really really powerful this is a build that i usually work around and also I said I'd mention a couple things. I feel like this might need a bit of a rework too. There is a mutation at the end, towards the end of the game from, I believe the character's name is Murgle. It's called Bite and the fighters get a huge damage boost. It's 1% damage based on the 1% of the enemy's current HP gets converted into damage. That's huge. It's huge. It does so, they do so much damage. They're so powerful. For me, they're S tier. I feel like they're great. Just a really, really strong class to build your, your, your team around. 
Growers. Growers are one that I was really, when the game came out, I thought this was the team that I went for. I really thought they were cool. I love the AoE damage in games. And that's what they deal. They'll deal up to 250 AoE damage. But really, they're kind of underwhelming. And it's too bad that they're underwhelming. I, I think that they'll probably get buffed, buffed and buffed and buffed over time. They just feel like out of all the ranged attackers, they just are the most underwhelming of the whole bunch. So I would put them in... I'm going to say that they are... They're not down here with the healers and the newbies, but they're definitely going to be behind behind our eggheads. They're going to be lower on the C tier. They're just not they're just not that good. Now we move into our cultists. Cultists are a fun one. I I admit I've done a lot of cultist builds where just getting all the tentacles out, right? So what uh, what your cultists will do is every three cultists you have, they will summon a tentacle. And the tentacle of course has a scaling level range, so it goes from 1 to 3. Of course, that also will increase your your tentacles attributes and there's also a whole tree on the mutation tree that you can put towards leveling up summons so that can make your tentacles really really strong pretty powerful i feel like the cultist class is is really really good um but I, but when you put it up against a fencer, up against fencers, I don't think it's there. I would say it's probably high B tier. I would put Cultus in high B tier, in the B tier, and that's I'm pretty comfortable with that. So they're gonna stay in B, and we'll move on to the shooters. I think shooters are probably, if I had to guess, probably the most used class in the game amongst the whole community that plays this game. I feel like shooters are the most, probably the most powerful. And what they do is they increase all allies' attack speed up to 70%. So that's huge, increasing all allies' attack speed, right? That, and so not, not only are they really powerful with the with mutations that you can get and their damage that spreads throughout, they also have the ability to really, really boost up your front line so you have a front line with fencers your front line with fighters and a back line with shooters you're getting all kinds of attack like attack speed going on your front line so so useful i think that i would put shooters in the high s tier for now this is in the current state of the game right that's what i'm going based off of now we move into our tanks Tanks, I think, also probably are they're they're, they're 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 interesting. Their taunt ability can be can be pretty interesting, right? So what, what they do is you get three tanks that are close together. They'll force nearby enemies to attack the tanks. They'll ignore everybody else for a period of time, and they will attack the tanks. And the tanks will those tanks will also receive up to a 160% armor boost. So that's really useful you can it's very strategic it's a very strategic thing i've seen some people use it very well in king of the hill having backline tanks can work really well um i just don't feel like it's a it's something that most people are gonna be doing i don't think it's it's not something that i really particularly like to to run with um uh i think probably it's one of this is probably the hardest one for me to decide i would put them higher than these guys i would put them in the c tier i would i would take them over eggheads and throwers i think i i their utility is nice the fact that they that taunt ability can really really affect the whole outcome of a fight and it only takes three people to have that work right you only need the three three of your tanks to to make that happen now we have tricksters another really fun one tricksters are, are i i really love tricksters and what they do is they have the ability to dodge so they will evade enemy attacks by backstepping and if this this ability can trigger up to every four seconds so that's really strong being able to dodge constantly it's it's just a really really powerful thing and i feel like it's pretty i i would rank them for me, just just a hair below 
just just below our fencers. I, I think I would put them just 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 underneath the fencer class. And the last one is our mages. Mages probably I've seen some really powerful mage classes or builds. They they just dump damage. They, they put out a ton of damage, right? So what they'll do is they summon a Thunderbolt that can deal up to a, uh, 1,050 damage to an enemy. You can get different things that will make it Chain Lightning. That I feel like if you're going to have that build, you probably need Chain Lightning. I haven't done a lot of Mage builds. Um, but I think they're pretty squishy overall. Um, I like them as a high... I would take them over cultists for sure. I would probably move them. Can I get this to go? There we go. I'd probably put them here like this, have them in the higher B tier, I think. They, there's an argument for them to be A tier, probably low A tier, high B tier, I think would be a fair, a fair place to have them. But yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I think that's uh, for, for what I rank right now, personally, that is where I would put our classes so realistically fighters with shooters is probably one of the most common uh strong builds you're gonna see so if you have that your front line back line that's one of my favorite builds to do right now just in the current state of the game all right guys that is gonna be the end of today's tier list and thank you so much guys for checking out the content if you want more despots game content Please drop a like, drop a subscription. It helps a ton and I'll catch you on the next one.